Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A woman is in critical condition after crashing into a wall of rather van or riding her motorcycle on the west side. What police are saying about the accident? In the seventh and smallest Democratic presidential debate yet, six candidates took to the stage. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tavrizian in New York. We'll have a debate recap coming up. And live cam giving us a peek outside. Did you like yesterday morning's weather? You're going to love today's. Mike is standing by with your forecast. And good morning to you. It is January uh, 15th, Wednesday morning. And it does not feel like January 15th. It feels like June 15th. In, in South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. You said it was going to stick around for a few days, and it certainly is. Is this getting old yet? It is a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. a lot bit. But lot. yeah, temperatures, uh, you think about it, the, the highest normal low temperature in August is about 73, I think. We're right around 70 right now. Yeah, it's muggy and yuck. Yeah, and our normal high temperature is in the low 60s, so obviously things are just way out of whack right now. And, well, the camera's a little bit out of focus, but there's uh, some fog out there again this morning. It's not real, real thick right now, burning at a mile and a quarter visibility. Uh, and we do have a lot more thick fog out there in Rock Springs at zero as of right now. And some over by Houston, but of course, and I keep saying this all the time, it's going to get thicker as the morning rolls on. Kerrville only three quarters of a mile. Same thing in Uvalde. And if you got a push alert about a half an hour ago, and I said no advisories as of yet, but just sent out another one because the uh, Weather Service just did issue a dense fog advisory. Basically, the northern half of our viewing area goes out 90 and then straight to about right along paralleling or straddling I-10 and up to the north. And this is in effect up until 9 o'clock this morning. So we will see those visibilities dropping down throughout the rest of the day. And these temperatures, again, are just way, way out of whack. Yesterday, we did make it up into the uh, mid to upper 70s. Least Mountain Cedars on the low side. We'll take, you know, anything we can get as far as some good news about this. And throughout the rest of today, we're going to be staying steady in the upper 60s this morning with patchy fog, a little bit of mist out there. I don't know about y'all, but I saw a bunch of mist on the the windshield. The wipers were going this morning and then later on this afternoon, basically just cloudy skies. I know we had a couple of holes in the clouds yesterday, you know, a hole or two here and there. Now we do have some pretty good rain chances actually beginning tomorrow. Temperatures may be down just a little bit. Then a front's going to move on through here, but we do ha now have a couple of days of Keep your fingers crossed, some hopefully good rain. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Anything yet? Well, right now, Mike, as we look out at the roadways, uh, things actually look even, if it's possible, uh, a little bit slick or slipperier than yesterday morning. So uh, once again, you will have to slow down, reduce that speed. You want to increase that following distance and, of course, give it some extra time. Now, as we move over to Transguide 604 at uh, Military Drive, uh, you can far, far west side, you can see folks, uh, not too many folks out just yet, but the roadways are slick, so you want to slow down. We do have a uh, closure here, 37 at I-10. Uh, the connectors from I-10 to 37 right now still closed at this point, so keep that in mind. You will have to uh, take the exit before or after and then make your way around. Take a look at Highway 151 and 410. Just no one really moving fast, but those long turns and curves, you want to slow down well, well ahead of those areas once again this morning. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, new this morning, a woman in critical condition after she hit a van while riding her motorcycle. Happened around 1020 last night at 410 in Culebra over on San Antonio's west side. According to police, the van was uh, pulling out of the parking lot. That's when the woman riding the bike hit them. The woman was taken to a nearby hospital and police say no charges will be filed. Well, this March, it'll be 25 years since Selena Quintanilla was tragically killed. She continues to be remembered with the legacy she left behind. Today, the McNay will open a new Selena photo exhibit. Sarah Costa is live downtown to tell us more about that exhibit. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that exhibit is called Selena Forever or Siempre Selena, and it opens this morning at the McNay Art Museum. And it's going to be open until July 5th, so you have some time to go visit it. The the McNay Art Museum will pay tribute to Tejano music legend Selena with a series of photographs by award-winning San Antonio photographer John Dyer. Selena was a subject of Dyer's photo assignments for the cover of Moss Magazine in 1992 and for Texas Monthly in 1995, just months before she was killed.
So we thought about Selena because we're having a larger moment at the McNay this season on fashion. We're focusing on 1990s fashion with an exhibition opening later in January called Fashion Nirvana, Runway to Every Day. She shattered ceilings and helped us know that we can integrate into a larger American culture with success, with respect, and with great dignity. And you can see that exhibit when the McNay Art Museum opens today, which opens its doors at 10 a.m. And in order to see that exhibit, it is included in general admission. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning. Headline six Democratic presidential candidates took to the stage in Iowa Tuesday night in their last debate before the Iowa caucus. Some topics included talking of hope, defeating President Trump, and bringing a divided nation back together. And one of the most talked about moments of the night happened after the debate was over. ABC's Megan Tavrizian is in New York this morning with more. In the seventh and smallest Democratic presidential debate yet, six candidates took the stage with an unexpected dose of Iowa nice. Bernie is my friend, and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. Candidates speaking about climate change. In Australia, there are literally tornadoes made of fire taking place. And health care, with former Vice President Joe Biden hitting Senator Bernie Sanders for not being candid with voters about the cost of his plans. I think we need to be candid with voters. I think we have to tell them what we're going to do and what it's going to cost. In the first debate since President Trump ordered a strike against Iranian General Soleimani, the candidates spent time discussing foreign policy. I said 13 years ago it was a mistake to give the president the authority to um, go to war. We have a situation where he got us out of the Iranian nuclear agreement. As president, I will get us back into that agreement. Obviously, Mr. Trump has no strategy. And the elephant in the room. Sanders denied that he told Elizabeth Warren in 2018 that a woman couldn't win the presidency. Uh, anybody knows me, knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Senator Warren responding. I disagreed. The only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and me. The moment getting perhaps the most attention happened after the debate, when Sanders extends his hand to Warren and she appears to rebuff it. The Iowa caucus is now less than three weeks away and the race is tight. The latest Des Moines Register poll shows Senator Sanders at the top with former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Warren and Mayor Pete Buttigieg following closely behind. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. The House of Representatives preparing to vote to send articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump to the Senate for trial. After the vote, House managers chose to prosecute the case. will walk the articles across the Capitol. The Senate expected to transform into an impeachment court as early as tomorrow. The Federal Aviation Administration is investigating a jet fuel dump over elementary schools in California. Delta Airlines says releasing fuel is, quote, part of a normal procedure to reach a safe landing weight, end quote. The FAA responded to the incident, tweeting fuel should be dumped over designated, unpopulated areas, typically at higher altitudes. At least 20 children and 11 adults were affected with minor injuries. The investigation is ongoing. Now to the Spurs, silver and black take on the Miami Heat tonight at American Airlines Arena. Tip-off is set for 6.30. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 4.38, 69 degrees. Top singer Billie Eilish is now the youngest artist to record a bomb theme song. Details on the new 007 film, No Time to Die, still ahead. A local school district eliminating class rank for students who are not in the top 10%. How school districts say this will help students affected by this change next. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's another nasty start to your day, very warm. The only jacket you need is a possible rain jacket. Mike has details coming up. Northeast ISD dropping class ranking for all students who are not in the top 10 percent. It's the first district in San Antonio to make the move, and it's a plan that's been in the work since 2018. Donna Newman with NEISD says it will help alleviate stress that students feel about the rank. NEISD says they found during the admission process some universities are looking at the child's entire academic experience, not just their rank. Newman says this process is starting with the district's 7th graders who are just now choosing their 8th grade courses. 
more information on this story, just go to ksat.com. 442, 69 degrees. 2019 was a record year for real estate in San Antonio, and more people are moving into the city. It's expected to stay that way. Economists, what they're saying about San Antonio's future still ahead. A microburst ripping a part of school gym. Teachers speaking out about the terrifying moment coming up in your GMA first look. Wow, look at that video. Welcome back, everybody. It's now 445. Dramatic video out of North Carolina shows a storm ripping apart a school gym. ABC's Gio Benitez has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, lucky to be alive. And it took me a second to process what was going on. And I looked and I was like, oh my goodness, this is not good. And I started yelling to my students, run, run, run. Watch this terrifying moment from Union Intermediate School in Clinton, North Carolina. 21 children playing in the gym as a storm raged outside. And then overnight, PE teacher Tanya Robinson Freeman sharing her harrowing story with GMA. I said to them, get down and cover your heads. And they did exactly that. My kids were absolutely amazing. The National Weather Service saying this morning it was a microburst with winds up to 85 miles per hour that moved through the area and caused that damage. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear much more from those lucky survivors. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. As we head into the new year, the word more may just sum up the housing market. More people, more jobs, and a need for more houses. As 12 on your side, it's Marilyn Moritz report. San Antonio remains a seller's market, one that's attracting more people who want to call this city home. Let the good times and heavy equipment roll. It was another record year for local home sales. 34,000 area homes sold, a 7% jump over the previous year. We hope that the trend will continue, given that there's so many businesses moving into town, so many people moving into town. We don't see that stopping. Real estate professionals gathered for the annual housing forecast, and it's a sunny one, mirroring the local economy. From an economic standpoint, we're looking for good, solid job growth. We're looking for income growth, too. Economist Jim Gaines says expect more business and professional jobs. That strong job market is a big reason you see a lot of that. Population is booming. San Antonio is attractive. In fact, by 2050, Bear County is expected to have nearly three and a quarter million people. And all of those people need some place to live. We're still not building enough uh, housing units anywhere in the state and in San Antonio as well. We are seeing a lot of people coming from California, from Illinois, um, and from the East Coast. Certainly coming from California, we probably look like paradise. Because compared to much of the nation, San Antonio homes are affordable, but more demand drives up prices. How do we keep it affordable? Keep building. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Build it and they will come. And that's the truth. Mm. Let's check on the roadways. Any accidents so far this morning? I know it's a mess out there. Well, we had some accidents overnight, and we have an issue again with this microphone. Hmm. We had this problem yesterday. What is going on with your microphone, Mr. Marcus? So, as we take a look at the roadways, there it is. Nope. now we hear you. See, lights are green. You move it and it comes back on. Right now, the roadways still look pretty good, so no issues at this point. And we're moving over to uh, 37 and I-10 where we had that construction. Everything's back open once again. Take a look at 35 at Walsham. So far, no issues there. And then 410 at Austin Highway. A travel up there on the northeast side looking pretty good. So as we move along in different parts of the city, so far, we're under kind of the same advisory. Leave early, give it some extra time and reduce that speed and increase that following distance once you head out. And backups here, just in case. Yes. Yeah, well, I'll put three mics on, I guess. You probably should. I know. It's Do you want the other one over there? There's sure, why not? Okay. Yeah. Third <laughs> time's a charm. Put it on that belt. I was going to so say, he's going to have everything there, so, on yeah. his belt, and then he's going to have stuff on every call. You can have it. EMP. <laughs> Just don't fall in the pool. Hey, looks wise on some of the trans guide cameras, mm -hmm. as well as uh, live cam, it's not as bad looking as what the it was. The fog definitely isn't as thick, but there was that mist the whole way. Yeah, in. It, the mist is out there, and the Weather Service just did issue a dense fog advisory, so that is now in effect. Uh, not as long as the past couple of days, just till nine o'clock. Show you that in a moment. At least we can now see the airport from this view because, of course, 
Two days ago, nothing out here. Yesterday, uh, it was about to this point where we could see, and then the airport was blocked. But this cannon probably will get thicker at times. Dense fog advisory, basically for the northern half of our viewing area, up through 9 o'clock this morning, not 10 o'clock. So it may sort of mix out a little bit sooner than yesterday. But we'll still have some lingering stuff out there. Five miles visibility at the airport, one up the road in Bernie, five New Braunfels, and then you go over toward Rock Springs, zero visibility. Uvalde just at one mile right now and it's a little bit thicker up there around Kerrville and once again it's the the northern half of our area that has that dense fog advisory temperatures are even warmer than what it was at this time yesterday we were in the what was it yesterday? Low 60s, low to mid 60s, and now we're in the upper 60s and low 70s. Again, the normal, the highest normal low temperature is about 73 degrees. That's August. So we're almost at that. The normal low temperature right now is in the low 40s. So we're 30 degrees above normal and the humidity as expected has definitely come back up. I mean, we've got these numbers that are in the upper 60s and low 70s. So it's definitely muggy out there and uh, kind of on the oppressive side because you like to see these numbers below 50. Now, here's what the computer model is looking like. A couple of sprinkly showers around here. There could be a hole or two in the clouds. I know we had a bit more in the way of some sunshine yesterday, but I still think it's just going to be I'm leaning toward the cloudier side throughout the day today and uh, a sprinkle is possible. Now we go into tomorrow and we'll have some more showers around in the morning, but then watch this line right here. And this is where some of the computer models disagree on what's going to be happening. There is a weak front which is going to be kind of working down in here. Some models have it bringing us through, keeping us down in the mid 60s for a high tomorrow. Some don't have it coming on through here, so we stay in the 70s, kind of splitting the difference as of right now because this one has it easing through here, but then sort of washing out. But then we still have all this moisture coming back on in here. We will have a better chance of rain tomorrow and then also going into Friday. We've got a very good chance for some rain showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. Then the more substantial front's going to move through overnight Friday into Saturday and that will pull in colder air. 74 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and like I said, I'm leaning more toward just the cloudy side. There could be a couple of holes in the clouds here and there. 77 for high temperature today, very, very warm. Tomorrow, better chance for some showers throughout the day. Going for 70 right now, so sort of splitting the difference between a couple of computer models. Same thing on Friday, better chance of rain on Friday, although a pretty good shot at some rain tomorrow as well. Now the front, the colder one may linger a little bit behind, so uh, there could actually be a leftover early morning sprinkle on f Saturday morning, early, early, but then we'll see sunshine. Breezy Saturday, 65. Temperatures continue to sort of make this decline going into next week. Next week right now looks like it is going to be on the cooler side, and for Monday for the, uh, the big march, it's going to be chilly and it's going to be some showers around a couple here and there. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 452, 70 degrees. The country of Greece is saying thank you to Tom Hanks and his family in an unusual way after they helped assist citizens from a deadly wildfire back in 2018. Details on that still ahead. Now to entertainment news and big news involving someone with the last name of Springsteen. Mm, I've heard of that name before. And a pop sensation links up with a famous secret agent. ABC's Romina Puga has some of the stories making headlines in Hollywood. Unlike his father who was born to run, you could say he was born to fight fires. Firefighter Sam Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen's youngest son Sam was sworn in Tuesday as a member of the Jersey City Fire Department. The 26-year-old was joined by his famous family at City Hall along with 14 other graduates. The boss says he's very proud of his son's accomplishment. We're just excited for him today. Pop sensation Billie Eilish will record the theme song for upcoming James Bond film No Time to Die. The teen, known for her smash hit Bad Guy, is the youngest artist in history to write and record a Bond theme song. I'm the bad guy. James Bond. Daniel Craig returns as 007, was called out of retirement to rescue a kidnapped scientist. No Time to Die hits theaters in April. Greece has extended an offer of citizenship to Tom Hanks and his family. It's for their help in assisting victims of a deadly 2018 wildfire. The Hanks family spent their recent summer vacations at a family home in the country. And happy birthday, Pitbull. The singer and actor turns 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till 70 degrees. Popular dating apps like Tinder and OkCupid are leaking personal information to technology companies. Details on how you can secure your information coming up in Tech Bites.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Investigators are returning today to try to find out what started a fire at a Northwest Side strip mall. A Bear County jail inmate takes his frustration out on three bailiffs in a courtroom. We're going to have a closer look at the case. Outside with live cam, it's 70 degrees out at the airport right now, and good luck trying to decide which setting to put your windshield wipers on. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is January the 15th. January the 15th, halfway through the month, and it's not feeling much like January. And this weather, Mike's going to stick around for a couple more days. Yes, and then we do have uh, kind of a, a weak little front moving through here, and then one that's got a little more oomph to it, and that's going to get us back down to January temperatures once we head in toward the weekend and uh, next week. But first of all, we are dealing with more fog today. Yes, it is getting a little bit tiresome with all this fog and temperatures are almost closer to the normal low what we'd see in about uh, late July or August. We're at 70 right now, mid 60s in parts of the hill country, and there is just a bunch of humidity out there. You will definitely notice the humidity when you walk outside. It feels like a, kind of a, a spring or summer morning out there. Wind uh, out of the southeast, uh, fairly light, and that's why we do have some fog. Now, visibility uh, looks wise, it's not as thick yet in and around the metropolitan area as it was the past couple of days. Matter of fact, no fog is being reported Stinson, Randolph or Pleasanton, but you go out in toward the hill country and that's where a lot of the fog is. Rock Springs at zero visibility as of right now and as has been the case each and every day this week and usually when we have this morning fog, it will get thicker in the next couple of hours and that's why dense fog advisory was issued about a half an hour ago up until nine o'clock this morning for pretty much the northern half of our viewing area and these numbers Wow, it's just hard to believe we're at 70 degrees, almost 30 above normal right now. Cloudy, warm, upper 70s, uh, maybe a peak or two of sunshine today. And then we do have a better chance of rain tomorrow. There is a weak front which is going to kind of move into the area, whether it actually makes it through here or not. That's still a little up for debate, but it will uh, help out with some showers tomorrow. Showers and storms on Friday. Right around 70 degrees going with for both days for high temperatures and then we'll start to get cooler over the weekend. More sunshine, especially Saturday and temperatures will continue to make this downward downward trend all the way into the first part of next week and there will be one or two showers out there on Monday. More details on the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike. And good morning, everyone at home as we take a look at the roadways. As far as accidents concerned, no problem, we're looking pretty good. But as far as the actual driving conditions themselves, just like yesterday. So we have some slick streets out there. You wanna be careful around those long turns and curves, uh, just like what you see here. This is a 151 at 410. And these areas where you have those turns and those curves along the highway, whether it be an extra ramp, entrance ramp, or it's the main lanes themselves, you wanna slow down well ahead of those areas, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute this morning. Leslie? Thanks, Marcus. Ingram Elementary School in Kerrville, just northwest of San Antonio, remains closed today due to illness. The school says six students in low attendance forced the school to close temporarily. Staff says the school will be thoroughly cleaned today. We asked if the flu was to blame, but the school only described this as being in response to incidents of illness. Students are set to return to Ingram Elementary tomorrow. We're told students won't have to make up the two days missed. Today, firefighters are going back to figure out what started a fire that led to evacuations at a northwest side strip mall. Fire happened at Crown Point Center off Calabra. San Antonio Fire Department says someone living in the apartments behind the strip mall first saw the smoke coming from the building. That person called 911, and when crews got there, smoke was coming out of the rooftop. No one was hurt. A Bear County jail inmate, apparently unhappy with how his case was proceeding in court, took his frustration out on a trio of bailiffs. That led to a violent confrontation in a holdover cell and some serious charges against David Murphy, the inmate. Paul Venema in court for a first-hand account of the fight as Murphy's trial begins. It was a day that Bear County Sheriff's Deputy Albert Bettis said he will not soon forget as he testified in the trial of David Murphy. Murphy is facing charges of assault on the peace officer. He manages to put his hand on uh, Huffmeyer's gun. Deputy Pettis said that what happened next was frightening. He starts pulling on his gun like he has his hands on it, like if you're holding something, and he's yanking it. 
yanking, yanking Huffmeyer up and down. Pettis is talking about a violent fight in a 399th district court holdover cell in March of 2018. Murphy had just been placed in the cell after a court appearance. He was there facing assault charges. As Murphy wrestled with the deputies, Pettis said he debated on whether to shoot him. But then I'm thinking, you know what? It's a small area. If I shoot him, it's going to go right through him and it's just going to ricochet. So I was like, you know what? Just get back in the fight. A fight that initially caught the deputies by surprise. I guess he either wanted to escape or kill us or I don't know what was going through his mind. We managed to get him under control and he's still trying to fight with the handcuffs on. This all happened just the other side of this door, which leads into the courtroom here. Pena said aside from his safety, he was worried about everyone in court. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. In your morning headlines, six of the Democratic presidential candidates wrapped up their final debate last night before primary voting begins. All touched on ways to defeat President Donald Trump. One of the night's biggest moments came when Warren made a forceful case for a female president and stood behind her accusation, suggesting sexism by Sanders. Sanders denied Warren's accusation. As the debate ended, he extended his hand, he extended his hand to Warren, who appeared to reject it. The latest Des Moines Register poll shows Senator <coughs> Sanders at the top, with former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Warren, and Pete Buttigieg following closely behind. Today, a preliminary trade deal between the U.S. and China is expected to be signed by President Trump and Chinese leaders. The document estimated to be more than 80 pages long. Presidents typically don't sign such bilateral deals, and trade agreements are usually reviewed by Congress. However, that's not the case this time. The Trump administration says Chinese leaders say it's because of promises by Beijing to go beyond prior commitments made on intellectual property theft. It's also a pledge from China to buy $200 billion in farm goods and other products made by the U.S. over a two-year period. The U.S. Supreme Court today is hearing arguments in a case that could determine what someone needs to prove in order to be protected under the Age Discrimination Employment Act. The 1967 law protects against workplace discrimination for anyone over 40 years old. Selena fans, you have a new way to pay tribute to the Queen of Tejano through the latest exhibit to open at the McNay Art Museum. The exhibit does open today. Sarah Costa live downtown with all the details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that exhibit is a series of photos of Selena taken by award-winning San Antonio photographer John Dyer. Now, Selena was the subject, the cover subject of Dyer's of Dyer's assignment for Moss Magazine in 1992 and for Texas Monthly in 1995, just months before she was killed. At the end of the month, the McNay will be opening a 90s fashion exhibition, uh, opening called Fashion Nirvana, Runway to Every Day. The director and CEO of the McNay says it made sense to include Selena with the impact she made in 90s fashion. And we didn't have to look far before we landed on Selena, who was, yes, a music icon, shattering glass ceilings for women passionate about Tejano music. But she also was a fashionista, opening two stores in her native South Texas in the 90s, one in Corpus Christi and a second right here in San Antonio, just down the road from the McNay on Broadway. So she was a fashion influence as well as a music influence in that great decade. Selena opened those two clothing stores before she was killed in 1995. And you can see that exhibit today when it opens at the McNay and when the McNay opens its doors at 10 o'clock this morning. And that is included in general admission. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. 508, 70 degrees. Phil had some popular dating apps accused of sharing your personal data. And next, city of San Antonio has seen too many kids accidentally hurt and killed with guns in the home, how local leaders working to reduce gun violence rates. And live cam giving us a look outside, not feeling much like January today. This mild weather is going to be around for a few days. My guest details still to come. Five twelve, San Antonio District Eight Councilman Manny Pelias has continually worked to reduce gun violence rates. It's why he's given away hundreds of gun locks to people living in San Antonio to make their home safer. Pelaya says many deaths from gun violence are preventable, and most of them involve children. He says kids can be curious and will find a gun at home, and it can accidentally discharge, killing the child. Pelaya says giving away gun locks is just a start to reduce gun violence. 
He wants San Antonio to lead the conversation of larger issues about the topic in our country. The gun advocacy groups, uh, you know, had to admit that, you know, we have a problem in, in the United States. And uh, the anti-gun advocacy groups had to admit that the problem looks a little different than they thought it did. Um, and that uh, we are all a little bit closer to the middle than most of us think. It's just one of numerous topics discussed in this week's leading essay. You'll see many more from District 8 Councilmen throughout the newscast this week. You can catch the full interview with Councilman Playa Sunday morning at 8 right here on GMSA. 513, still 70 degrees. Still ahead this hour, Marvel fans getting excited once again. And we have a new preview of the newest film coming to theaters very soon, Black Widow. And next, big breakthrough. More on how scientists created the world's first living self-healing robots. I have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Now there's Sky Rizzi. Things are getting clearer. Yeah, I feel free to bear my skin. Yeah, that's all me. Nothing in me go hand in hand. Nothing on my skin. That's my new plan. Nothing is empty. Keep your skin clearer with Sky Rizzi. Three out of four people achieved 90% clearer skin at four months. Of those, nearly nine out of 10 sustained it through one year. And Sky Rizzi is four doses a year after two starter doses. I see Skyrizzy may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Before treatment, your doctor should check you for infections and tuberculosis. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, such as fevers, sweats, chills, muscle aches, or coughs, or if you plan to or recently received a vaccine. Ask your dermatologist about Skyrizzy. Five sixteen. Here we go again. A new report claims several popular dating apps are sharing personal data. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have details in Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, privacy problems for some popular dating apps. A consumer group in Norway says apps including Grindr, OkCupid, and Tinder leak personal information to advertisers. Those leaks, including users' GPS locations, may violate European privacy laws. The companies behind the apps have not commented. Third-party sellers on Amazon can again use FedEx ground delivery. The online giant had forbidden use of that service during the holidays for prime purchases, saying it was too slow. Now Amazon says FedEx ground meets its on-time requirements. Scientists in Vermont have come up with new programmable organisms called, being called the world's first living robot. They were created using stem cells from frogs. They can walk, swim, work in groups, and even heal themselves. But does one do all the work and the rest of the group take credit? Those are your tech bites. We talked about that yesterday at 9 a.m. They're itty bitty right now, but they're hoping to build them to, to scale them to size. Oh. And they will be living organisms that will be robots that you can program to like go into situations to do. It just sounds like a bad idea to me. <laughs> bad idea. Way over my head. Yeah, mine too. Let's find out how traffic's looking, Marcus. If they're intelligent enough to repair themselves, at what point do they figure out they don't need us? That's right. the point. That's what I'm scared of. Hello. Isn't that program called Skynet? <laughs> uh, there was also another movie before that with uh, Tom Selleck. They used robots yeah. on the police department. Also, um, everything kind of went haywire there, too. I'll look it up. Find that movie right now as we say, uh, squirrel, as we take a look at the roadways. Still no accidents on the highways, just slick conditions out there. Just something that's really not appealing. You open the door, you almost want to turn around and go back home, uh, stay home for the day. Highway 151 and 410 there so far. Uh, no issues. Traffic starting to pick up just a little bit, but the roads are slick. Take a look. 410 to McCulley. You can see that nice sheen to the roadway as uh, folks are traveling eastbound and westbound near the airport. 35 and 410 up on the northeast side. No problems there. And 21 at 410. You can see uh, traffic still extremely light, but those connector ramps are a prime example of areas that you want to slow down well ahead of. You don't want to be applying the brakes uh, in those turns. General application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Runaway. Yes, with Gene Simmons as well. Yep. And, oh, um, yeah, yeah. I remember that. And uh, <laughs> the gal from uh, Dirty Dancing. 
Yeah, what's Cynthia Rhodes. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. going to say Jennifer Grey. No, no, no. wrong Let's person. See. Yeah, but in Skynet, that's from uh, Terminator. Terminator. Mm -hmm. and they hit the button, okay, and took over. So I, it's very scary stuff. I, I'm afraid of it. It is. Like you're afraid you're going to wake up and the vacuum cleaner's like, I'm here to get you, Liz. Something like that. Okay. Notice how they're just now not even saying move along. They just move they us just along. They just move us along, yeah. Okay, let's keep talking about this. And then, <laughs> I've got control of the clicker now. Now watch the map start to change without me, so. I know. Anyway, hey, uh, it's not as bad. Look, I know. <laughs> it's not. And then you get... The, then those old computers crash, and where do we? Where are we then? Um, anyway, it's not as bad looking on the serious side out there right now as what it was the past couple of mornings. But the roads are definitely damp. We've had a lot of mist around here. My wipers are definitely going this morning. Dense fog advisory up until nine o'clock. Just the northern half of our viewing area. Of course, visibility out there at the airports five miles, which is again not bad. Ten Stinson, Randolph, Pleasanton, okay. New Braunfels, a little bit of fog. It is going to get thicker though in the next couple of hours, and then you head out to the hill country and that's where the majority of the really thick fog is this morning rock springs at zero visibility eagle pass you didn't have any fog yesterday but just a mile and a quarter some around kerrville fredericksburg and up around austin and these temperatures though i don't know what's the bigger story this morning some of the fog are these numbers that are 30 degrees basically above normal more like what the normal low temperature is in I don't know, late July, late August, right around there. We're at 70 right now, and the humidity is just sky high, especially for this time of year, mid to upper 60s and some low 70s. Now, computer model does have a couple of sprinkly showers around the area this morning, and then basically just a cloudy sky as today. A couple of holes in the clouds here and there are possible today, but once again, I'm just kind of leaning toward the cloudier side. Now, we go into tomorrow. We'll have some more mist and drizzle in the morning, and then here's the can't really figure it out because computer models are not in agreement as of yet is what this is going to do. There's a front right here that's going to be sliding down in our direction and a couple of computer models have this sort of easing through the area which would have the big effect on temperatures. Uh, some models have us only in about the low to mid 60s tomorrow others up in the mid 70s. I'm right now splitting the difference going at 70. Same thing on Friday. And as you can see with the, the wind flow, this model does bring it through a little bit more, dropping the dew points down somewhat. But then by Friday, that just turns around. The humidity comes back on in here, and that's going to help to feed more showers. So a decent chance of rain tomorrow, better chance of showers and thunderstorms Friday. Then we get that uh, this sort of the, the main front, if you will, coming through overnight into Saturday. That's going to cool us down and that's going to get us progressively colder going into next week. Today, anything but cold. 74 for a temperature at noon, already more than 10 above normal at noon, and then 77 later on today. Basically cloudy skies, perhaps a couple of holes in the clouds here and there. We'll have more uh, sprinkly showers around tomorrow and then showers throughout the day tomorrow. A decent chance for some rain tomorrow and a better chance of rain on Friday. 70 both days, low temperatures in the 60s. And then Friday, <coughs> we'll still have a couple of leftover clouds. I think that front may be kind of held up somewhat into the overnight hours. And so some clouds starting off early Saturday, sunshine in the afternoon, 65, and then just down into the mid to lower 50s going into the next week. Wow, big difference next week than this week. Thanks, Mike. 23 past the hour, 70 degrees. Still ahead, Marvel is at it again. We have a new preview of the latest film in the franchise, Black Widow, starring Scarlett Johansson. Today in entertainment news, movies, music, and a living video game. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. There's a new world of widows. New enemies. For my past. Here's your latest look at Black Widow, Marvel's long awaited film focused on Natasha Romanoff, played by double Oscar nominee Scarlett Johansson. Black Widow zooms into theaters May 1st. Name? Bond. James Bond. A new Bond film means a new theme song, and No Time to Die has a red hot artist. Billie Eilish, who's up for six Grammys this month, will perform the tune she wrote with her brother Phineas. At 18, Eilish is the youngest artist to record a Bond theme, joining a list that includes Paul McCartney, Adele, and Duran Duran. No Time to Die debuts April 10th.
Nintendo's new music video doubles as a teaser for Universal Studios Japan's new theme park, Super Nintendo World. The attraction promises to give visitors power-up bands, allowing them to collect coins and engage in other activities as they move through such familiar to gamers locations as Mario Kart and Peach's Castle. Super Nintendo World opens in Osaka this summer. Universal plans similar attractions at its parks in Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore. Playing with power in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check 527, 70 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, federal authorities are looking into why an airliner dumped jet fuel over a densely populated area of Southern California. Good morning, it is Wednesday, January 15th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Not very pretty out there, very mild, and the roads are wet. What's happening? Nothing yet. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I but love I, his pauses. But I stress yet, because we saw that yesterday. <clears throat> For the majority of the morning community, we were doing pretty good. Then we hit about 640, 642, mm -hmm. and then that's when the accidents start to come in. So right now, things not too bad. Remember, you will have to give it some extra time, uh, reduce that speed, and of course, slow down well ahead of any of those turns or curves because it's slick out there just like yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I was out yesterday, so I'm, Mike, I'm not sure where we're at with the mountain cedar right now, but I am struggling with a permanent tickle in my throat today. It's way, way down. <clears throat> okay. Some of this, something, like, something, something stuck? Weather that's been, yeah, <laughs> it's been washing it out. Mold, surprisingly, is not on the, answer. the lower <laughs> side, too. But um, one thing we're not dealing with right now in and around town is the really, really thick fog. The roads are misty and you know, wipers are going all morning long. Temperatures are way above normal. We're in the upper 60s and low 70s around here, and we're going to be in the upper 70s later on today. Basically just cloudy skies and, you know, maybe a peak or two of sunshine. Now, we do have some better rain chances coming in the next couple of days, so that's encouraging. Look out by the airport, and visibility is, again, fairly decent out there right now. Roads are wet and... Got five miles visibility, go up by 10, and all of a sudden the fog starts getting really thick up there around Bernie. Off to the south, it's not as thick, and then head out toward Rock Springs, Pea Soup, mile and a quarter visibility at Eagle Pass, Kerrville, some pretty good fog as well. Dense fog advisory was issued about an hour ago, pretty much for just the northern half of our viewing area up until 9 o'clock this morning, so it may not last quite as long, but we'll still have some of this mist and drizzle and maybe even a little bit of a stubborn fog in behind that. And again, temperatures are well up into the upper 60s and low 70s, almost like late July normal low temperatures. Talking about the allergies, mountain cedar has been going down for the past couple of days. It's only on the moderate side as of right now. Mold is low. Now, we do have a fairly good front coming through here Friday night into Saturday. It's going to be windy on Saturday with winds out of the north, so that may give another good shake to some of those mountain cedar trees. But for the time being, it's okay. Pretty good rain chances. We'll talk about that and take a look ahead to next week. It's going to feel more like January. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now, so just leave well enough alone for right now. Well, right now it's not too bad, Mike, but as we all know, things uh, will get worse as far as the volume of traffic. That, of course, that brings the uh, folks out there with no pa little to no patience, and then we start having some accidents. Now, as we take a look out there on the roadways, you can see everything's still in the green right now, according to the map. So switch over to TransGuide, give an example of what you can expect once you uh, head out and uh, back out, out of the driveway. Now, this is 1604 at Military Drive, and as you can see, uh, visibility, not too bad. However, the roads are slick. So whether you're in an elevated road or in a surface road, remember to reduce that speed and increase that following distance for this morning's commute. Leslie, Mark. In morning headlines, Democratic presidential hopefuls met for their final debate last night before the voting begins in Iowa. ABC's Mary Alice Parks takes a closer look at where all the candidates stand on health care. At each of his town halls, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders asked the crowd about showing. their health care bills. His proposal for a massive overhaul of the health care system in the United States would be expensive for the federal government. His point is the current system is expensive for Americans, too. Sanders' plan calls for the government to automatically provide health insurance to every American, not health care, just insurance. Instead of patients paying premiums and deductibles, people would pay higher taxes. Hospitals and doctors would send all bills to the government, and most private health insurance would be banned. Over the last 10 years, insurance and medical costs rose twice as fast as wages in the United States. Hundreds of thousands of families turned to bankruptcy because of medical bills. And in 2018, over 27 million Americans had no insurance at all. 
Senator Elizabeth Warren is on board with the idea in principle, though she proposes gradual steps and taxing employers who already pay some employee premiums. Medicare is popular, and experts say it has low administrative costs compared to private plans. Overall, a majority of Democrats are at least somewhat on board with the idea. Still, many Democrats are firmly against throwing people off their current insurance and think it's a government expansion that's just too big. I don't think that's a bold idea. I think it's a bad idea. We can do this without uh, charging people raising 30, 40 trillion dollars. Several Democrats instead like the possibility of a public option where government run health insurance plans would be available to anyone for purchase. Take a version of Medicare. We let you access it if you want to. And if you prefer to stay on your private plan, you can do that too. Now, President Trump has said that he plans to introduce a health care policy proposal of his own as he campaigns for a second term, but he has not yet done that. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. A Texas inmate is set to be executed tonight for shooting and killing his wife who had feared she would never get out of her marriage alive. 64-year-old John Gardner faces lethal injection for the January 2005 slaying of Tammy Gardner in North Texas. If the execution happens, Gardner will be the first inmate put to death this year in Texas. In Houston this morning, police have arrested a suspected gunman and a second person following a shooting at an area high school. The arrest came nearly four hours after a male student was shot and killed at Bel Air High School yesterday. Reports indicate the victim shot just after seventh period as class let out for the day. A suspect ran from the scene but was caught and arrested by Bel Air police officers along with the second suspect. Officials say this was not an active shooting situation. They say the accused gunman is also a student at Bel Air High. A motive is unknown. Former New Orleans Saints player Steve Gleason will be awarded the Congressional Gold Medal this afternoon. Gleason became a leading advocate for people struggling with Lou Gehrig's disease after he was diagnosed with the condition, leaving him paralyzed. The medal is Congress's highest civilian honor. 536, 70 degrees. Still ahead, what experts say you need to do credit-wise to maintain a good score. An next reaction for parents and students after that airliner dumped jet fuel over at least six schools in Southern California. And once again, live cam giving us a peek outside. What kind of yucky start to your Wednesday morning. So happy to have you with us, though. The FAA investigating that jet fuel dump that affected dozens in Southern California. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, school children were among those injured and treated. Parents and first responders in the Los Angeles area quickly racing to Park Avenue Elementary Tuesday afternoon. A plane was coming over and it was throwing gasoline and it spread it on my friends and on me. And then it got in my eye and I, I'm, getting, I'm blurred. Delta Airlines says Flight 89 bound for China declared an engine issue shortly after taking off at LAX. This video is believed to be the jet as it dumped fuel over at least six schools before its emergency landing. I thought like, like it was smoke or something. But until it went down, I felt it, and it smelled like gas. 60 people were affected, with at least 20 children and 11 adults reporting minor injuries. We used some soap to, like, put, to put in our arms and then wash our, our, our head, our face, and our, in our back of our ears and our neck. Delta says releasing fuel is part of a normal procedure to reach a safe landing weight. But the FAA, in response to this incident, tweeted fuel should be dumped over designated unpopulated areas, typically at higher altitudes, so the fuel atomizes and disperses before it reaches the ground. We don't have anything that would indicate any need for evacuation, nor for uh, shelter in place. At this time, everything seems to be okay. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. 541, 70 degrees. Here's what. Well, if this isn't just the cutest little boy you've ever seen, he doesn't know what to think right here. He's just cute and cuddly and soft, and you're going to meet him coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, it is extreme adorable time, not only with Veronica and our puppy. <laughs> anyway, uh, who is this little guy? This is Hal, and he's a two-month-old shepherd mix. He is just the cutest little guy, and and he's got some paws on him, <laughs> just at two months old, so he's probably going to be a decent size. He's going to be a good guy. size dog. Something to really consider. I mean, certainly start. they start off small, yeah. um, but they, they'll grow in size. They're not puppies forever. <laughs> and he's still at that two months, so he kind of doesn't know what's going on around yeah. here. Maybe it's just a little early for him. <laughs> 
who knows about that but oh my goodness gracious he's adorable he's very playful so don't let this fool you you know chew toys a plenty <laughs> lots of chew toys because that will save your shoes and furniture and yes. everything else around there yes, so exactly. what you got going on um so we are right in the middle of el refido fundraising okay. which is exciting obviously it's an official fiesta event in april but we are starting now because the dog who raises the most funds for the dogs and cats at the san antonio main city becomes Ray Fido, which is an official Fiesta Royal title. Ah. So your dog could become Fiesta Royalty. It's just a lot of fun. Um, we hope that people go online at sahumane.org slash ERF to learn more information about it and to register your pet. Um, but any dog could be El Rey Fido, whether you adopted them from a shelter or if you found them on the street okay. <laughs> on your own. Yeah. So just get on there and yeah. tell all your friends and just raise a bunch of money yes. and it goes right to y'all, yes, right? Yes, definitely. It goes all back, back to the dogs and cats. And there's lots of ways to raise money. We have a lot of contestants who uh, make their dogs fiesta medals. So that's a good excuse to make your dog a fiesta medal. <laughs> when you really want to go all out for yes. your, your pooch to try and get that, that title. So. Well, it's, I mean, two weeks into the new year, we're already talking about uh, fiesta, Absolutely. of course. But it's a great fundraiser, <laughs> great way to raise money for the uh, San Antonio Humane Society. If you'd like more information about that or this little guy. Oh my gosh, those eyes are just melting you. 4804 <laughs> Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 is the number to call. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Oh. She, I got to love on Mr. Pickles yesterday. Cutest, sweetest dogs in the world. Something I never thought I'd hear you say out loud. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to build good habits, but we all know they can benefit you. <laughs> Just trying to make sure everybody's awake. You want to start this over again? Yes, okay. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's hard to build good habits, but we all know they can benefit you in the long run if you stick to them. Digital journalist Ivan Adetta has some ways to manage your finances better in this week's Money, It's Personal. I know, I know. Every week I give you some tips on how you can improve your finances, but those tips won't be effective if you don't make a habit out of them. So, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has some tips to help you manage your money by creating better habits. First, only apply for credit when you need it. A good credit score is important for your financial well-being. So, one way to get and keep a good score is to only apply for the credit you need. Next, you're entitled to a free credit report every 12 months. So, it's ideal to set up an annual reminder to be up to date and spot any potential errors that may be hurting your credit score. The CFPB also suggests setting up bank alerts to notify you of your checking account balance at the end of the week or if your balance gets too low. This can protect you from incurring any overdraft fees. If you have a financial emergency and you can't make the bills this month, act fast and call your creditors. Missing a bill payment may have negative financial impacts. So it's best to call your lenders or creditors before your due date to see what your options are. Lastly, when you're shopping for a loan, get quotes from at least three lenders. The CFPB says one of the best ways to save money on a loan is to shop around and get estimates to compare terms and fees. I'm Ivan Herrera. To see more stories like this, watch KSET News at 9, Monday through Friday. In your morning medical headlines, the World Health Organization has published a list of the decade's biggest global health threats. Climate change, infectious diseases, anti-vaxxers, and antimicrobial resistance all top the list. The organization calls the problems, quote, urgent global health challenges. The list was developed with input from experts around the world. Any morning consumer headlines, Chick-fil-A making sure its customers eat more chicken. The fast food chain says the rest of the month they will give away free chicken nuggets to customers. But you can't just go to the store in, uh, grab and grab a free eight piece. Chick-fil-A says you have to create an account on the restaurant's mobile app first. If you already have an account, restaurant says sign into the app to catch the deal. Not a fan of chicken, Chick-fil-A says you can still get a deal. You can swap out your free nuggets for a complimentary order of its new kale crunch side. No way, I'll take the nuggets. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, 549 right now. Let's check on the roadways once again. Marcus, how's it looking out there traffic-wise? Well, right now, as we take a look at the map, still no accidents. So uh, not too bad out there as far as your uh, 
times, your travel times for various parts of the city. As you look, uh, even up there, 1604 and uh, Bandera Road, no congestion just yet. We're moving all the way over towards 281, 1604. Travel looks pretty good. Here in the downtown area, no problems with those highways. Let's take a look at Transguide. You can see that there's 1604 at military starting to get a few more vehicles out on the roadway. Now, folks, the roads are slick. You can see that nice sheen to the roadway, that reflection there as the headlights travel north and south along 1604. Also down below on military drive. So you will need to give it some extra space between you and the other vehicles out there this morning. I forgot to tell you guys on Sunday, I was up in the hill country fishing. You knew that part. I forgot how radical the construction is north of 1604 on 281 right now. Oh, I mean, talk bad. about a huge process and an undertaking. Avoid at all costs. Avoid at all costs. Mm -hmm. And then you got 10 also. And 35. Which sections of 10 out there just past 1604. Like, mm -hmm. that looks like it did about three months ago. I just hadn't seen that far north. I know, I know. I just seen, had not seen that far north in, in, in a while where they're doing such widening and new front edge roads. I mean, it's unbelievable. New uh, underpasses, overpasses. Making good progress, but still, I mean. It takes, it takes time, and it seems like as soon as they finish one, there's a whole other section they got to start yep. on. It's called progress. Anyway, hey, it's not as bad looking this morning as what it has been the past couple of mornings. Uh, it's pretty good actually out there by the airport. Now, we do have the dense fog advisory. It's in effect up until 9 o'clock, northern half of our area. Visibility at the airport still is reporting at uh, 5 miles. It's improved a bit up there in Bernie and elsewhere. It's OK, but again, this, you know, it's only 530, 545, 550, pardon me, in the morning. And we're still going to be dealing with this throughout the rest of the morning commute. And it's probably going to be getting thicker in places. Rock Springs has been uh, basically just in pea soup all morning long. Del Rio, it's really thickened up as well. Uvalde, Eagle Pass, a lot of very thick fog and temperatures. Wow. I mean, we're about 30 degrees above normal, 25, 30 degrees above normal. And these are more like numbers in the uh, kind of like late July as far as low temperatures and the humidity as expected has really come up. We've got these dew points well up into the mid upper 60s and even low 70s around here. So it's almost summer kind of humidity. Computer model does have a couple of sprinkly showers around here and basically cloudy skies today. A few holes in the clouds are possible. Yes. Now, once we get into tomorrow, that's where things get a little bit interesting as far as exactly What's going to happen with temperatures? There is a weak front which is going to be moving on through here, and that's that line right there. And as I put this into motion, this model has it moving on in. Some models, computer models, have it coming on through here, so that would have obviously more of an effect on our temperatures, keeping us in the 60s. Some models don't have it coming on through, so it keeps us up in the mid 70s kind of splitting the differences of right now because everything is is not in agreement. One thing a lot of them do agree on, though, is the fact we will have a more decent chance for some showers around the area tomorrow. And then we go into Friday and we're going to have a better chance for showers and thunderstorms. So here's what's going on as far as again, this one computer model, a lot of humidity around here today. Then there's that first front and this one has it kind of drifting on through just a little bit. And by the afternoon coming on through, but then turning right around and going back up to the north. So the humidity will come back on in here and we stay very humid through Friday. Then that next front comes on in here and that's going to drop uh, to humidity and temperatures down and really drop us down by the first part of next week. So we are going to have some cooler temperatures coming on in here by next week. And it looks like as much as this week was on the warm side, next week's going to be on the cool side of things. And then Look at all this moisture pumping on in here from the Pacific Ocean. So that's why we've got all these clouds around here, moisture, and then we get some disturbances, and that's going to help out with the rain chances. It, it is encouraging still as far as rain chances the next couple of days. 74 today at noon, cloudy skies. We've got our mist and drizzle, some fog this morning. And then again, I'm leaning more toward the cloudy side, maybe a couple of holes here and there. 77 for a high temperature, about uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above normal. Tomorrow and Friday, Going kind of splitting the difference again with the computer model 70 for high temperatures. We start off very mild. OK, rain chances tomorrow, better rain chances on Friday, even if you uh, thunderstorms thrown on in there. And then that front will come on through. We'll see some sunshine by Saturday afternoon, windy conditions, and we get steadily cooler going into uh, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday and a couple of showers are possible Monday. All right, Mike. Thank you much. 554, 70 degrees. We all know how popular the Baby Yoda character has become. How companies like Build-A-Bear are trying to keep up with the demand for merchandise. 
Toy companies playing catch up when it comes to the character often referred to as Baby Yoda. Build a Bear announced his stores will soon stock the adorable alien. Star Wars character appeared in the series The Mandalorian back in November. Series creators were so intent on keeping the character a secret, they did not tell toy companies about it. That led to a lapse we're in now. Disney recently tried to appease fans by allowing fans to pre-order toys, but those won't ship until April or May. It's not clear if the Build-A-Bear version will be available before then. About 3 till right now, 70 degrees at San Antonio International. And next hour, GMSA family members of people who tried to kill themselves are looking for help, but finding very little comfort. That's why one woman turned her grief into action, helping thousands save themselves from the aftermath of attempted suicide. More on that story to come. Trans Sky, wet roads could have problems. We'll get an update as we take a look around San Antonio on GMSA. A woman is in critical condition this morning after a motorcycle crash this morning. And police say nobody involved will face charges. Selena fans, listen up. You have a new way to honor the Queen of Tejano. Good morning. I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll tell you about a new exhibit opening up at the McNay later this morning. And live cam giving us a look outside. We do have patchy fog in our area. Not quite as thick as yesterday. A lot of mist and drizzle as well. It's another messy morning commute. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hope you had a great evening and slept well last night. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is January 15th. Not real pretty outside. It certainly doesn't feel much like January. Very mild out there, Mike. Oh, yeah. Temperatures have been steadily going up the past couple of days. You thought it was warm yesterday. It's even warmer. I mean, these are normal low temperatures like uh, late July, late August, something like that. Uh, it's not as foggy as we have been the past couple of days. Obviously, the roads are still wet, so you want to take it easy with that. Visibility six miles at the airport, 10 Port of Stinson, so in and around the metropolitan area, it's not too bad. And actually, Bernie has improved slightly in the past half hour. Kerrville, though, a lot of fog, and it has just stayed with pea soup out there in Rock Springs for the past about uh, three, four hours. Del Rio, a lot of fog, and even further out to the uh, north and west. And east, we don't have quite as much. Now, we do have a dense fog advisory. This was issued about 4.30 this morning for the northern half of our area and it's in effect up until nine o'clock so it should be starting to thin out a little bit sooner than the past couple of mornings and again these temperatures are just way out of whack i mean we're upper 60s and low 70s around here and of course the humidity to boot now on the positive side mountain cedar has continued to drop down over the past couple of days and it's just on the uh, moderate side this is yesterday's count the updated reading is going to be coming out again in about an hour or so mold is also low which is surprising with all this moisture out there as far as temperatures we are going to be well not moving all that much the next couple of hours we'll make it up into from the upper 60s low 70s into the mid 70s by noon and then we'll top off later on today still leaning more towards just the cloudy side, maybe a couple of holes in the clouds, but 77 for a high temperature later on today. We do have some better rain chances the next couple of days. Tomorrow, better rain chance and even better on Friday. And there's a weak little front that's going to kind of sit in the area. Then a more substantial front's going to move on through here and that's start to cool us down. It looks like next week, Maybe on the cooler side. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and despite well, now I see that. I was going to say, despite all the mist and drizzle, but now we got that accident there. Well, just one accident so far. So going back in towards the downtown area, 1604 inside 410, no problems. We have to go all the way out there to 1604 at Highway 181, and that's where we have uh, an accident uh, being reported. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that accident. Right now, 410 at Ingram, you can see traffic in both directions running pretty good. And here in the downtown area, 35 of Brooklyn, north and south on lanes, no issues. 35 of Walsham, traffic is starting to pick up, but so far, no delays in anyone's travel times this morning. Mark? New this morning, a woman is in critical condition after a crash on the west side. San Antonio police say she was riding her motorcycle on Culebra near 410. She then ran into a van pulling out of a parking lot. Police determined nobody was under the influence and nobody will face charges. That woman in critical condition at University Hospital. A Bear County jail inmate apparently unhappy with how his case was proceeding in court took his frustration out on a trio of bailiffs. That led to a violent confrontation in a holdover cell and some pretty serious charges against David Murphy, the inmate. Paul Venema was in court for a first-hand account of the fight as Murphy's trial began. 
It was a day that Bear County Sheriff's Deputy Albert Bettis said he will not soon forget as he testified in the trial of David Murphy. Murphy is facing charges of assault on a peace officer. He manages to put his hand on uh, Huffmeyer's gun. Deputy Pettis said that what happened next was frightening. He starts pulling on his gun like he has his hands on it, like if you're holding something, and he's yanking, yanking, yanking Huffmeyer up and down. Pettis is talking about a violent fight in a 399th district court holdover cell in March of 2018. Murphy had just been placed in the cell after a court appearance. He was there facing assault charges. As Murphy wrestled with the deputies, Pettis said he debated on whether to shoot him. But then I'm thinking, you know what, it's a small area. If I shoot him, it's going to go right through him and it's just going to ricochet. So I was like, you know what? Just get back in the fight. A fight that initially caught the deputies by surprise. I guess he either wanted to escape or kill us or I don't know what was going through his mind. We managed to get him under control and he's still trying to fight with the handcuffs on. This all happened just the other side of this door which leads into the courtroom here. Pettis said aside from his safety, he was worried about everyone in court. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. Firefighters plan to return to a strip mall on the northwest side this morning to continue an investigation into a kitchen fire. It happened at the Crown Point Center off Culebra. San Antonio Fire Department says someone living in the apartments behind the strip mall called 911 when they saw smoke coming from the roof. It was surprising for me because uh, I was coming to the store and I saw uh, a lot of uh, fire. Uh, terrible. And I was worried because I was thinking what's in the store. Firefighters say everyone at the shopping center was evacuated and there were no injuries reported. Selena's impact on fashion and culture continues to grow nearly 25 years after her death. Fans can now see a new photo exhibit opening this morning at the McNay Rather Art Museum. Our Sarah Coast is live downtown to tell us more about the new exhibit. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that exhibit is going to be a photo exhibit, a series of photos of Selena shot by San Antonio photographer, award-winning photographer John Dyer. The McNay, at the end of the month, will be opening up a new exhibit, a 90s fashion exhibit called Fashion Nirvana, Runway to Every Day. Director and CEO of the McNay says it made sense to include Selena with the impact she made in 90s fashion. Selena was the subject of Dyer's photo assignments for the cover of Moss Magazine in 1992 and for Texas Monthly in 1995, just months before she was killed. It's been 25 years since her untimely death, and she continues to remain incredibly popular with Latinos, myself included, all over this city and this country. I'm not surprised. What she did in her short but impactful life was remind all of us, those who were from here and those who immigrated like myself to this country, that if we dream hard enough, anything is possible. And you can see that new Selena photo exhibit today when the McNay opens its doors at 10 o'clock this morning. Everything is included in general admission. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Park and 607 San Antonio District 8 Councilman Manny Pelias says continually worked to reduce gun violence rates. It's why he's given away hundreds of gun locks to people living in San Antonio to make their homes safer. Malaya says many deaths from gun violence are preventable, and most of them involve children. He says kids can be curious, and they'll find a gun at home, and it could cause an accidental discharge killing the child. Malaya says giving away gun locks is just the start to reduce gun violence, but he wants San Antonio to lead the conversation of larger issues about the topic in the country. The gun advocacy groups, uh, you know, had to admit that, you know, we have a problem in, in the United States and uh, the anti-gun advocacy groups had to admit that the problem looks a little different than they thought it did um, and that uh, we are all a little bit closer to the middle than most of us think. It's just one of the numerous topics discussed in this week's leading essay. You'll see many more from, well, much more from District Eight Councilmen throughout our newscast this week. And you can watch the full interview with Councilman Sunday morning at 8 right here on GMSA. Discusses visions for the future of San Antonio's northwest side. More on domestic violence, panhandling, affordability, and making San Antonio more walk and bike friendly. 
After a month-long delay, impeachment is set to take center stage in Washington once again. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the House will vote today on a resolution to move things to the next phase. Karen Capa has more on what to expect today and over the next week. The House on Wednesday poised to vote to send the articles of impeachment against President Trump over to the Senate, the first step toward a trial. The House is likely to finally send that the article's over to us. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is also expected to name her impeachment managers, the House Democrats, who will make the case against the president. That group expected to include Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff and Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler, whose panels had prominent roles in the House proceedings. The president's defense team is expected to include White House counsel Pat Cipollone and President Trump's personal attorney Jay Sekulow. Republicans continue to criticize Pelosi's decision to withhold the articles from the Senate for a month, but Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the trial is now likely to begin on Tuesday. And we'll be able to, we believe, if that happens, in all likelihood, go through some preliminary steps here this week. But some Senate Democrats believe the delay has given them time to make their case for additional witnesses, especially to moderate Senate Republicans. What we need to do is hear from those people who were in the room who have a firsthand knowledge of what occurred. That's what the American people want. McConnell says the witness issue will be addressed. On Capitol Hill, I'm Karen Kafa. In other morning headlines, the Federal Aviation Administration is investigating Delta Airlines after one of the company's airliners dumped fuel that hit a school and school children in California. Delta says the plane declared an engine issue just after takeoff from Los Angeles. Jet dumped its fuel as part of normal procedures to reach a safe landing weight per a Delta statement. However, FAA says the process should happen over unpopulated areas. There's video of the fuel dump. 60 people were affected by it. That included at least 20 children. Virginia could become a critical 38th state to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment to the U.S. Constitution today. The Equal Rights Amendment was proposed nearly a century ago, and it's designed to guarantee equal legal rights for all American citizens, regardless of sex. It would end legal distinctions between men and women in matters of divorce, property, and employment, among other matters. However, if it is ratified, court battles are expected. A Justice Department legal counsel says the resolution has expired and is no longer pending before the states. 611, 70 degrees. Popular dating apps could be in trouble in Europe. A new claim says they're illegally giving advertisers personal information. New Education Center in San Antonio aims to help young children get resources to aid mental illness. We'll hear from the President of Junior League of San Antonio straight ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam on your Wednesday morning. Very mild, not a very pretty day. Be careful as you hit the roadways. Six fifteen. the Junior League of San Antonio is celebrating a new education center. Part one of the center opened yesterday in partnership with the Clarity Child Guidance Center. It's going to provide audio and visual streaming equipment to allow Clarity to share training sessions. The goal of those training sessions is to educate health care providers here in Bear County and around the nation. One major focus is JLSA's signature project to help young children with mental health issues. The Junior League of San Antonio members who are partnering with the professional clinicians are building an education program that we will take out into the community to provide support and training and resources to elementary age children and families regarding mental wellness. Yvonne Addison says that signature project expected to kick off later this month. For more information about Junior League of San Antonio's plans, head to JLSA.org. Time to check on the roadways once again. This is about the time it starts getting pretty busy. And right now we're still looking at this accident. Uh, we're moving down to Highway 181 at 1604. And as you see, slight slowdown. So a so little bit of a delay there on 1604 as a result of that accident. Uh, but traffic's still light. It is still early. That's going to be just south of the lake there. As we take a look at other areas uh, like on, <clears throat> excuse me, through Transguide, you can see 35 of Brooklyn here in the downtown area still uh, no delays in the travel times there all the way through 35 at Walsham. And then we moving over to the northwest side, I-10-604. Look at that reflection. It almost looks like they're driving on glass there at the interchange. So, folks, it is slick out there. Give it some extra time. Reduce that speed. And remember, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Thank you, Marcus. Welcome. So. It is not as murky looking this morning. No, the mm -hmm. fog's not as thick, but it's still kind of just yuck. Oh, yeah, and, and with the humidity out there. But first of all, okay, quick, look at this picture. What do you see? Fog. No, 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 right in the middle. Bale of hay? Or? Yeah, what's it look like, though? 
You got to look really close. I know the picture's kind of on the, the small side. Uh, Cow? And. Lion? Okay, the caption says a couple of people saw a lion. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can kind of see. And a couple that, saw a pig. Maybe. And they saw what? A pig. A giant pig. Oh, I can yeah. see. Yeah, okay. All right. You probably see the angry dog, right, Muta? Huh? No, that's only in the moon. Oh, okay. Just check it. Uh, to me, it looks like lion. So, anyway, just. Kind of a neat little picture. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, it, it's not as uh, foggy. Visibility is nowhere near as bad in and around the metropolitan area as what it was the past couple of days. We do still, though, have the dense fog advisory in effect up until 9 o'clock this morning. Six miles out there at the airport. Same thing. Randolph, uh, Port S.A., Stinson, not bad. New Braunfels. But then you head out toward the hill country, and this is the really thick stuff from Rock Springs over toward Del Rio, Ozona. Uh, just pea soup sort of fog out there. Uvalde, mile and a half visibility. And so the thickest is obviously out there to the west, but the like I said, the dense fog advisory is the northern half of the area, and it's in effect for the next uh, two and a half hours or so up until nine o'clock. So it should start to thin out a little sooner than what we had the past couple of days. Temperatures are just off the charts, basically. I mean, this is almost 30 degrees above normal about what it is, uh, say, late July as far as normal low temperatures. And the humidity, of course, is just sky high with these dew points well up in the mid and upper 60s and low 70s. So you notice the humidity. It's going to be sticking around for today as well as the next couple of days. But there's some minor fluctuations. So first of all, computer model does have a lot of clouds hanging around here, maybe a peak of sunshine here and there. And then tomorrow, and again, I keep saying all morning long, this is where computer models are differing as to what's going to be happening tomorrow. There's a weak front which is going to try and slide down into the area, and it's this line right there. Put that into motion. It drifts down to the south just a little bit, and this model tries to bring it through, but notice the flow continues out of the southeast. And so here's what the uh, wind and humidity uh, graphic looks like. So we keep the humidity around today. Tomorrow, here comes that little front. It drops dew points down ever so slightly, but then it's going to start to come back up as we go into Friday, and so that's going to help out with the showers. So we've got a good chance of rain tomorrow, a better chance of showers and thunderstorms on Friday. Then the front's going to move on through here, or actually the kind of the, the main front, if you will, and that's going to give us more sunshine on Saturday and bring in cooler temperatures, progressively getting cooler throughout the first part of next week. 74 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and maybe a hole or two in the clouds here and there. 77 for a high temperature later on today. And then tomorrow, a decent chance for some rain. Going for 70, depending on that, that front. If it goes a little further to the south, we're going to be staying in the mid-60s tomorrow. If it hangs to the north, we are in the mid to upper 70s. So kind of splitting the difference right now. Uh, 70 on Friday, better chance of showers and thunderstorms on Friday. The front comes through overnight. Some leftover clouds Saturday, some sunshine in the afternoon, mid 60s, so closer to normal. Then we start to get the colder air continuing to filter on in here, and we'll only be in the low 50s first part of the week. And so it's going to be cold on Monday for anybody heading off to the march and maybe a couple of showers as well. Uh oh. All right. Thank you, Mike. 620, 70 degrees. An object, first of its kind, was created in Vermont. See what this so called living robot can do. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. When life changes, so do your taxes. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt. Our tax returns come with a free lifetime accuracy guarantee. Life may change. Your lifetime accuracy guarantee won't. Tax prep guaranteed at Jackson Hewitt. Up to 90% of people fall short in getting key nutrients from food alone. One a day covers all of them in just one serving. One a day and done. behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Don't ride the bike of shame. Get tons of equipment and free fitness training. Join Planet Fitness for just 20 cents down, $10 a month, no commitment. Deal extended to Thursday. Challenge what soft can be. Nivea Essentially Enriched Body Lotion with Nourishing Serum deeply nourishes skin for a softness like never before. Because soft can be powerful, just like you. Nivea.
In this morning's GMA First Look, lucky to be alive. And it took me a second to process what was going on. And I looked and I was like, oh my goodness, this is not good. And I started yelling to my students, run, run, run. Watch this terrifying moment from Union Intermediate School in Clinton, North Carolina. 21 children playing in the gym as a storm raged outside. And then overnight, PE teacher Tanya Robinson Freeman sharing her harrowing story with GMA. I said to them, get down and cover your heads. And they did exactly that. My kids were absolutely amazing. The National Weather Service saying this morning it was a microburst with winds up to 85 miles per hour that moved through the area and caused that damage. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear much more from those lucky survivors. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Popular dating apps causing problems for users. A consumer group in Norway says apps including Grindr, OkCupid, and Tinder leak personal information to advertisers. Those leaks, including users' GPS locations, may violate European privacy laws. Company behind the apps have not commented. Third-party sellers on Amazon can once again use FedEx ground delivery. The company had forbidden use of FedEx services during the holidays for prime purchases, saying it was just too slow. Now Amazon says FedEx Ground meets its on-time requirements. Scientists in Vermont have come up with new programmable organisms being called the world's first living robot. They were created using stem cells from frogs. They can walk, swim, work in groups, even heal themselves. Taking over the world. Scary, scary, scary. What's next? We want to know. <laughs> Scary. Time now is 25 minutes after 6. It's 70 degrees outside. Final debate before the Iowa caucus now over, and Democratic voters will decide who they want to be president of the United States. We'll hear some of the biggest moans from last night's debate stage. A new exhibit at the McNay Art Museum, sure to get all of us here in South Texas excited. We're going to see a preview about the new Selena Siempre Showcase. And take a look around San Antonio with Transguide 410 at Fredericksburg, 410 at Austin Highway. We'll check back in with Marcus. A new Selena exhibit is coming to San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. We'll tell you about a new exhibit opening this morning at the McNay Art Museum. In the seventh and smallest Democratic presidential debate yet, six candidates took to the stage. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tavrizian in New York. We'll have a debate recap coming up. What happened in January? We're not real sure, but we are going to check it with Mike because right now you're looking at the airport where it's currently 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Wednesday, January 15th. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being with us on this Wednesday morning. How are the roadways looking? <coughs> Excuse me. Not the same as yesterday. Uh -oh. As far as your driving condition, uh, they are slick out there. Visibility, eh, not too good, not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but your main concern this morning is going to be how slick those roads are. So any turns, curves coming to a stop, you're going to have to give it some extra time this morning. Extra time. And let's be totally honest. There's a ton of people watching right now who are totally fine with a milder January around here. Yeah, a lot of people skip the cold weather. Now, yeah. it is going to get colder starting really this weekend and next week. But for the time being, yeah, it's just, I mean, put it in perspective, the normal high temperature is the low 60s right now. And, and we're, we're already in the, in the 70s. We're in the upper 60s and low 70s around the area. Patchy fog, some mist around the area. It is not as bad as what it has been, though, as far as uh, fall in places. There's mm -hmm. a lot of thick stuff out in the hill country. I'll show you that in a second. Then 77 for high temperature later on today. And I think just basically cloudy skies, maybe a couple of uh, peaks of sunshine out there. This is what it looks like out at the airport. And yes, this is a much better picture than we had the past couple of days. Although, like Marcus was pointing out, the roads are definitely slick out there. Six miles visibility officially. 10 uh, Port S.A. Stinson. New Braunfels pretty good. Bernie has improved. It was down to about a mile or so a couple of hours ago. But then you out to Rock Springs. This has just been pea soup fog all morning long. Del Rio half mile, mile and a half at Uvalde. And those are some of the thickest uh, visibility or thickest areas of fog that we have on the map right now. Dense fog advisory was issued about 430 this morning and it's in effect for the northern half of our area up until nine o'clock. So it should start to get on out of here a little bit sooner than the past couple of days. And there's those temperatures again, upper 60s and low 70s around here.
It's amazing. At least mountain cedars on the lower side and it moderates a lot lower than what it has been and mold is low. Kind of surprised at that one. Mountain cedar trees may get a good shake by the weekend. We'll talk about that and some decent rain chances, which is very encouraging. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now and I thought you had another uh, accident to, to talk about over there. So just that same accident. That it looks, okay. Right. And it looks like it's clearing up 604 at Highway 181. So not too bad there in that area. As we look at uh, other areas through Transguide, you can see 35 at Walls and North and Southbound Lanes start to get a little bit busier out there. But uh, right here you can see 604 I-10. There's definite evidence that the roadways are slick. So give it some extra time. Remember, put the seatbelt on and put away those distractions this morning. Mark. Thank you, sir. This March, it'll be 25 years since Selena was tragically killed. She continues to be remembered with the legacy she left behind. And today, the McNay Art Museum here in San Antonio will open a new photo exhibit. Sarah Costa is live downtown to tell us more about it. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and that Selena exhibit is called Forever Selena or Siempre Selena, and it opens today at the McNay Art Museum, and it's going to be open through July 15th. It is a series of photo collections taken by San Antonio award-winning photographer John Dyer. Selena was a subject of Dyer's photo assignments with the cover of Moss Magazine in 1992 and for Texas Monthly in 1995, just months before she was killed. So we thought about Selena because we're having a larger moment at the McNay this season on fashion. We're focusing on 1990s fashion with an exhibition opening later in January called Fashion Nirvana, Runway to Every Day. She shattered ceilings and helped us know that we can integrate into a larger American culture with success, with respect, and with great dignity. And you can see that Forever Selena exhibit this morning when the McNay opens its doors at 10 o'clock in the morning. And that exhibit is included in general admission prices. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. And their last debate before the Iowa caucus, six Democrat presidential candidates took to the stage in Iowa last night. They talked of hope, defeating President Trump, and bringing a divided nation back together. But one of the most talked about moments of the evening happened after the debate was over. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the latest. In the seventh and smallest Democratic presidential debate yet, six candidates took the stage with an unexpected dose just, of Iowa nice. Bernie is my friend, and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. Candidates speaking about climate change. In Australia, there are literally tornadoes made of fire taking place and health care with former Vice President Joe Biden hitting Senator Bernie Sanders for not being candid with voters about the costs of his plans. I think we need to be candid with voters. I think we have to tell them what we're going to do and what it's going to cost. In the first debate since President Trump ordered a strike against Iranian General Soleimani, the candidates spent time discussing foreign policy. I said 13 years ago it was a mistake to give the president the authority to um, go to war. We have a situation where he got us out of the Iranian nuclear agreement. As president, I will get us back into that agreement. Obviously, Mr. Trump has no strategy. And the elephant in the room. Sanders denying that he told Elizabeth Warren in 2018 that a woman couldn't win the presidency. Uh, anybody knows me, knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Senator Warren responding. I disagreed. The only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and me. The moment getting perhaps the most attention happened after the debate, when Sanders extends his hand to Warren and she appears to rebuff it. The Iowa caucus is now less than three weeks away and the race is tight. The latest Des Moines Register poll shows Senator Sanders at the top with former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Warren and Mayor Pete Buttigieg following closely behind. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. If you missed any of the moments from the debate, we have the top ones right now at KSAT.com. Search politics to get the latest from last night's debate stage in Iowa. Federal prosecutors claim actress Lori Loughlin and other parents are withholding evidence in the college admissions scam. They say a majority of parents haven't submitted materials despite requests to turn them over. Loughlin's attorney says the government is doing the same thing. They say the feds are hiding evidence that would help their defense. Auckland pleaded not guilty to paying $500,000 to have their daughters pose as athletes and get them into the University of Southern California. 
People of color report paying more in banking fees than white people in the United States. That's according to a study released by Bankrate. A financial services website surveyed more than 2,600 adults. They found white checking account holders pay an average of $5 a month in fees. Hispanic bankers spend $16 a month and black bankers spent $12. One expert in the study says it could be a result of fewer institutions in marginalized communities. Speaking of banks, America's biggest banks are seeing rising profits. J.P. Morgan Chase jumped 21 percent in the fourth quarter, just over eight and a half billion dollars. Citigroup's profits rose 15 percent, just shy of five billion dollars in the fourth quarter. The improved profits come despite interest rate cuts that made lending less profitable. One of those companies selling clean tooth, or rather clear tooth aligners, are trying to take a bite out of a competitor. Smile Direct Club now says it will sell its devices to dentists and orthodontists going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the company that makes Invisalign. Until now, Smile Direct Club sold straight to consumers. Fans of Baby Yoda will be able to make their own version. Build-A-Bear now says it has a Baby Yoda kit available soon. The character key to the show, The Mandalorian uh, on Disney Plus, is the latest Star Wars character to be at Build a Bear. Oh, and remember, have you ever seen the lines at a Build a Bear shop? Oh, yes, I remember standing in there when my daughter was little. Exactly. So get ready for long lines yet again. Baby Yoda, Build a Bear. 638, 70 degrees. Family members of people who tried to kill themselves are looking for help but finding very little comfort. That's why one woman turned her grief into action helping thousands save themselves from the aftermath of attempted suicide. That story is coming up after the break. Outside with Live Cam midweek forecast coming up with meteorologist Mike Osterhage as we take a live look at downtown San Antonio. Six forty-two. More people are killing themselves than ever before. Last year, nearly forty-five thousand Americans died by suicide. What's even more alarming: there were one point four million attempted suicides, and it's those who survive and their family members who can often be left with little help and little resources. Well, one woman has taken her pain from attempted suicide and turned it into a tool to help others. KSAT 12's Max Massey has details. So I attempted suicide at age twenty-three and thankfully survived. I would have killed for support after my sister attempted. These are all real emails from real people who attempted suicide. They were all sent to this woman, Juliette Kerwin Carr. Her father attempted suicide twice. His pain and the pain she and her family felt afterwards led her to study suicidology. So suicidology is the study of suicide. Her research found there is a lot of support for family members and those who died by suicide, but very little for those who survived. My sibling attempted when I was seven, then my dad, then my daughter. Erica Kitzman looked everywhere for help, but didn't find any until she found Juliet. Juliet talks about the caregiver aspect, and she really focuses on the importance of self-care. Juliet started a website called Ash for people looking for acceptance, strength, and healing. She gives people the permission to grieve. It gives clear advice and resources for people who have feelings of suicide. They have attempted it or if you're a friend or a family member. Best thing that you can say to someone who's suicidal or feeling suicidal or having suicidal thoughts is that you're not going to leave them alone. The worst thing you can say? Gosh, I know that you, you're having a hard time. The best thing you can do is listen and don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. If you or someone you know are contemplating suicide, here are some resources to contact. Bear County Center for Healthcare Services is open 24 7. It can be reached at 210 223 SAFE. You can also call the National Suicide Prevention Center at 1 800 273 TALK. And if you are more comfortable texting, you can always text 273 TALK to Lines for Life at 839863. I don't understand all of that, but okay, you can find all of this at ksat.com for a better explanation. After a few nights off, San Antonio Spurs getting ready to play tonight. Today will be in Miami to play the Heat in the last game of a four-game road trip. Tonight's tip-off scheduled for 6.30 there in South Florida. So you text 273-TALK to Lines of Life. Correct. Okay, 273-TALK. Yes, 273-TALK. Two eight three nine eight six three. Okay, let's check on the roadways. I know it's getting busy out there. 
It is. As we take a look at the roadways, you can see that's 410 at Highway 151. And uh, look at that volume of traffic, the headlights. So the taillights that you're looking at, that's going to be the vehicles headed towards Highway 90. The opposite direction, those headlights, that's the volume of traffic headed northbound on 410. Moving over to Highway 151 at 410, you can see just how busy it's starting to get out there. 410 and McCullough, closer to the airport, eastbound and westbound lanes looking pretty good. Now, the roadways do look a lot better here in this shot, but that just could be an optical illusion. 410 Dawson Highway up on the northeast side, we're seeing high volumes of traffic. And then 410 at Fredericksburg Road, starting to see a little bit of slowdown. All those eastbound main lanes headed towards that I-10 410 interchange, which... Yeah, right about now, quarter to seven, it's about par for the course. So in some areas, it looks like it could, the roadways could be drying out just a little bit, but use caution out there, gentle application of the brake and the accelerator. And yeah, not bad there at 410 in front Doesn't look too bad there. Hopefully roadways are starting to dry out. Should mean less accidents. We hope. Friction from the tires tends to uh, dry them out just a little bit more. We uh, still have a lot of fog in the area, mm -hmm. especially out in the hill country. Not as much here in town, which is good news. And this was a couple of days ago, and I just love this picture because, first of all, yeah, there's a golf course somewhere out there, but it's just a big old field to run in. And that's what that dog's doing. Great shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC uh, Connect picture. Yeah, here's a uh, live cam out at the airport, and it looks like a lot of those uh, traffic cams that Marcus was just showing. Roads are damp. You can see the sheen on the road there on 410 going over Broadway by the airport, but at least we can see the airport off in the distance. And the dense fog advisory is still in effect, though, up until 9 o'clock. So for the next uh, couple of hours for the northern half of our viewing area. And six miles visibility out at the airport. Now, Bernie was at three. It has dropped a little bit. And Rock Springs still has just, I mean, it's thicker than mud out there as far as the, the fog is concerned. Half mile Del Rio and more fog further out to the northwest. So that's where the majority of it is right now. Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Kerrville, and temperatures. It's like, well, first of all, we're about 25, 30 degrees above normal. And it's like what we would see as a normal low temperature in about late July. 70 is what it is right now, and there's plenty of humidity out there as well with dew points in the upper 60s and low 70s. Computer model, a couple things to take away from it. A lot of clouds, obviously, maybe a hole or two here and there, some mist and drizzle this morning. Then overnight, we'll continue to see more uh, showers kind of around the area. There's also a weak front, which is going to be sliding on through right here. And Depending on which computer model, one has it kind of staying further north, the other one has it moving on through here. So that's going to have a big difference in temperatures. If it goes through, we get in the mid or stay in the mid 60s. Stays up to the north, we stay in the mid to upper 70s tomorrow. Um, I'm going to take the middle of the road right now because it's still very indecisive as far as what's going to be happening with these computer models. But then we go into Friday and we'll continue to see the uh, flow coming in here out of the southeast. So a lot of humidity today. Here comes that first front and it just this model has it barely working its way through here a little bit drier air and then it turns around and heads back the other direction primarily. So we are going to continue to keep the humidity around Friday feeding more showers and thunderstorms. Then the more significant front comes through here on Saturday and the air really dries out going into next week. Colder temperatures and we'll also have a couple of more uh, showers around here possible on Monday. Now as far as today, Lots of clouds, 74 degrees at noon, and then we'll top off in the upper 70s later on today. Again, a hole or two in the clouds is possible. And then tomorrow, going for 70 for a high temperature. Same thing on Friday. A decent chance for some rain tomorrow, and then Friday, a better chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Couple could linger into the wee hours of Saturday morning. We will see more sunshine in the afternoon on Saturday. It's going to be breezy on Saturday, so have a feeling those low mountain cedar numbers may start coming back up and then a chance for a couple of showers on Monday. All right, Mike, thank you much. Mm -hmm. 649, 70 degrees. Sometimes the voice inside your head is the biggest critic of all. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, we're gonna tell you ways to stop negative self-talk. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 094, Fireball 9. Daily 41605, Fireball 8. And your cash five, 1312, 1325. And your Mega Millions, 9, 11, 13, 31, 47, Mega Ball of 11, Mega Flyer of 2.
Good morning, America. Coming up on GMA, we've got a huge celebration here. Robin's 30th anniversary at Disney. From ESPN to GMA, we've got it all. And wait till you see who's coming to the party. It's only right here on GMA. The House on Wednesday poised to vote to send the articles of impeachment against President Trump over to the Senate, the first step toward a trial. The House is likely to finally send that the article's over to us. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is also expected to name her impeachment managers, the House Democrats, who will make the case against the president. That group expected to include Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff and Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler, whose panels had prominent roles in the House proceedings. The president's defense team is expected to include White House counsel Pat Cipollone and President Trump's personal attorney Jay Sekulow. Republicans continue to criticize Pelosi's decision to withhold the articles from the Senate for a month, but Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the trial is now likely to begin on Tuesday. And we'll be able to, we believe, if that happens, in all likelihood, go through some preliminary steps here this week. But some Senate yeah, Democrats believe the delay has given them time to make their case for additional witnesses, especially to moderate Senate Republicans. What we need to do is hear from those people who were in the room who have a firsthand knowledge of what occurred. That's what the American people want. McConnell says the witness issue will be addressed. On Capitol Hill, I'm Karen Kafa. And starting today, the uh, section of Lock and Terra Parkway will be closed for a month. Transportation and capital improvements will be improving the pavers on the street inside the rim. The section of road being worked on is between the I-10 access road and Vance Jackson. All of the businesses inside the shopping center will remain open. It's expected to be completed by February 15th. About five minutes till. Check the roadways once again, Marcus. And as we go back to Transguide, you can see various areas like 281 and Hildebrand still looking pretty good, not too bad. Start to see increases in traffic over on the west side, 410 and Ingram. And here in the downtown vicinity, you can see that uh, 35 in Brooklyn, upper and lower levels moving along nicely. Some areas, the roadways are dried out. Other areas, just use caution, folks. Mike? You know, it is not as foggy in a lot of these pictures in and around the metropolitan area, which is good news. Still damp roads out there. We do still have some fog, especially out in portions of the hill country. A lot of very thick fog. We still have the dense fog advisory in effect for northern half of our area up until 9 o'clock this morning. So we can still see some some fog around here, but just watch it with the uh, the damp roads. Boy, is it warm and humid out there today, and it's going to stay very warm, very humid today. 77. Now we do have a better chance for some rain tomorrow and Friday. Day. Right around 70 degrees for high temperatures. The best chance of rain is going to be on Friday, and then we'll see some sunshine finally on Saturday. Front's going to move through, and we'll get steadily colder for high temperatures down to about low 50s and 51st of the week, and maybe just maybe a couple of showers on Monday. Big change coming up mm -hmm. weekend. All right, thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day. Good morning, America is next. We're back for GMSA at nine.